Mario and horror go pretty hand in hand nowadays. In fact, I go as far as to say that this is the strongest the two have ever been connected. Sure, there's the classics such as the I Hate You story or the countless different creepypasta games, but this past year, hell, maybe even these past couple years, Mario horror content has been chugging along way faster. First, there was the Mario 64 personalized trend of 2020, which also helped kickstart a huge wave of analog horror series. Next, there was the anti-piracy trend of 2021, which all started because of the famous oh, Mario no. Party DS anti-piracy screen. Lastly, and most recently, the Friday Night Funkin' mod Mario's Madness updated a few months ago to a huge fanfare. Like, this mod was so goddamn big that I was starting to see Coronation Day memes on my Twitter timeline. Say whatever you want about Friday Night Funkin', but this is a huge win for us the fans out there. With this new wave of popularity to the Mario horror community, I've seen a few people mention a certain Mario fan game from the past. One that I've actually been a fan of since it's a original release back in the early 2010s, one that even though I haven't seen or played in years still sticks with me to this day. This game is none other than Psycho Waluigi. Okay, it's Mario the Music Box, but remember Psycho Waluigi? That game was sick. Mario the Music Box is an RPG maker horror game made by Team Ari and headed by Corpse Syndrome. Best way to describe this game would be if Corpse Party met like Mario and then a bunch of other RPG maker horror games were thrown in there. Something like Me Sour Mad Father. Now I and many others knew about this game because the YouTuber Luigi Kid Gaming had a fairly popular Let's Play series covering the game over its lifespan, starting all the way back in 2014. He's been there from the very beginning, and honestly, I don't think there'd be anyone else better to discuss this game than him. Well, the creator, I guess, but tell me, would you want to collaborate with someone who looks like this? So for this video here to help out is Luigi, middle name Kid, Gaming. He's here to talk about the history of this game, as well as sprinkling his opinions every now and then throughout the video. So without further ado, here is the green plumber man himself. So what's going on my dedicated Rose for that's it's some Yui Chicken and first of all thank you Toad Pop for inviting me to today's video. Let me quickly tell you about the hollow beginnings of Mario the Music Box, how it got out and how it became one of my all time favorite games and projects I've ever played here on my channel. It all started back in June 2014, at this time I already had like 10,000 subscribers and was pretty well known for playing Mario Horror, Creepypasta and EXE games. While browsing the internet for new Mario related horror content, I randomly came across this weird looking screenshot on Demon Art. This is when I randomly decided to create a Demon Art account and message Corp Syndrome, formerly known as Mario's Friend 9, telling that those screenshots really piqued my interest and asked if there's a playable demo that I could maybe record for my channel. Surprisingly, I got a response back a few days later. Apparently, they're working on something. But yeah, months have passed, radio silence, until. Out of nowhere in November 2014, I received another message. Hello again, sorry it's been a while. If you're still interested, I got a demo ready. Bro! My body is ready. After all RPG Maker horror games were in hype and my Mario horror content has been very well received in the past, I was very positive that this could go viral. And to my surprise, it did. Within the first month, my video got over 25,000 views, which was a lot for me back in the day. I knew that this game's concept was just amazing and I was very excited to play more of it in the future. But a few months have passed and the cringe lord that I was, or still am, decided to of course write another message to Corp Syndrome in February 2015 and ask if there were any new updates again. In which he told me that they are still very diligently working on it. Almost 7 months have passed since our last message and out of curiosity I decided to reach out one last time, which to my surprise led to an incredible, amazing offer. An exclusive version only for me, a build that already features like 95% of the game. Whew. This offer was like a dream coming true. Thanks to Corp Syndrome, I was able to play and showcase almost the entirety of Mario Music Box on my channel, which helped my channel grow insanely fast, skyrocketing up. To this day, Mario Music Box is still one of my most watched series here on the channel. Since that time, me and Corp Syndrome became actually pretty good friends and she wrote me that I also highly motivated her to finish the game. After the success of the released original 2015 version, we continued working together. Even was a mod on my Discord server for a very long time to help me making it even better. So Corp Syndrome and Ognik, if you guys see this video, I just want to thank you from deep down my heart again and for everything you did for me. Without your help and without this amazing game, I would have never been where I was today. So seriously. 
Thank you so much. Well, yeah, that kind of sums up my involvement in the history of Marty Music Box. The ultimate lore. <laughs>Before we start, I'm giving a big content warning on all of the stuff you see here on screen. If you're sensitive to any of these topics, either watch the video with caution or sit it out altogether. Anyways, on to the game. Opening the game, you're greeted with a sad Mario and some menu options. You've got the obvious new game and continue, but you also have the gallery, which saves all the full art pieces you encounter in the game. I also used it as a way to determine what I was still missing, but we'll talk about all my bloody Boing. Mario drawings I collected later. It's time to get into the game. There's actually an animated intro here, featuring our main man Mario, mysterious new characters, and lots of spinning of images. It reminds me of an anime opening, and the song kind of supports this. It's a banger song, no doubt, but I don't know if it fits Mario per se. That's a discussion I'll have over the course of this video, if Mario fits into the setting of this game well, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. I do know for a fact that Mario himself actually wants you to use yeah. code TOADBUP at GamerSubs to get 10% off of your order. Guess that old Italian son of a gun knows a good drink when he tastes it, so why don't you just go do that right now? The story goes that Mario heard rumors about this old mansion outside of the Mushroom Kingdom. Hearing that people who go there never come back and that it may be haunted, Mario and Princess Peach were going to investigate, but Mario eventually just decides to go on his own. This begins what will be Mario's biggest mistake since the new Super Series. Or Mario's missing which he will be in here as well. <laughs> this is also where the story differentiates itself from other Mario horror games. While the majority of games include other Mario characters, different settings from the games, and of course some classic Mario platforming, Mario the Music Box almost entirely alienates itself from the Mario universe that we know. The only remnants of that stuff we get are of course Mario and Luigi being playable characters, brief appearances of Princess Peach, mostly in the endings of the game, and small remarks Mario will make from time to time about booze or Bowser. Other than that, you're stuck in this unfamiliar territory with many secrets to explore and a deep backstory to unravel. Sorry, I got a bit sidetracked there. Let's get back to Mario's oh. silly adventures. Mario arrives at the mansion. However, it appears that the front doors are jammed. To unjam them, you happen to find a glowing spot in the fountain. This is where one of the main elements of the game comes into play. It's this crazy new mechanic that they call dying. Basically, if you choose even a single wrong option, Mario can and will die in some horrific manner. There are like hundreds, there are like hundreds of death scenes. This will make you turn into a Pokemon trainer where you gotta catch them all. <coughs> Never mind. It's similar to the RPG maker game Misao, where you really have to think about the right choice before you choose something. This game's a little more forgiving about it though, because you can save wherever and whenever you want right from your menu. That's nice, but I'll admit I might have went a little overboard because I would save like after every 30 seconds of gameplay. Saving's not the only tool you have at your disposal. You also have a journal, which Mario will periodically write in and mark down what's been happening. This isn't exactly useful, but it is neat to have. All right, enough of that, back to the game. This time, choosing to reach into the fountain, you receive a crowbar which you can use to pry the mansion doors open. This is where you're finally introduced to the inside of the mansion, the place that you'll be spending about 90% of the game in. Get comfy! However, you don't actually have to stay here because you could just immediately turn around and go back outside and leave the mansion for good. I honestly wasn't expecting to be able to leave immediately, but goddamn if it isn't the smartest ending of all horror game history. The game could call me a coward all it wants. I lived, asshole. You travel around the mansion a bit, and eventually you hear music in the distance. By the way, I'm totally gonna switch between first, second, and third person a bunch here, and I apologize in advance. It turns out that the music is coming from... a music box? The music stops as you finally get some light in the form of a totally not cursed lantern. Speaking of cursed, you personally wouldn't want to take the music box in a game called Mario the Music Box, right? Well, it doesn't matter, you don't get a choice, because Mario decides to take the haunted music box because it looks pretty. Actually, one of the few parts in a game where you can't choose anything. This, by the way, sets the rest of the game's obstacles in motion, and it's all because Mario's a kleptomaniac. Obviously, scary stuff begins to happen soon after, but it's too late, as the doors to the mansion have disappeared, leaving you to find another exit. It's now up to you to explore around the mansion, solving various puzzles to try and escape. 
Like I said earlier, it's pretty similar to other RPG Maker horror games, but I'm not complaining because God damn it, I love these things. You could pick up various notes and items to help solve puzzles or access different areas. Also, I discovered that Mario, for some reason, has a deep hatred for fake flowers. Like, he hates these things. He has different dialogue every single time you interact with one, I swear. Techie, if you're asking me. This also marks the part of the game where dying is now possible, and when I say dying is now possible, I mean you're going to die. A lot. Now, it's not all just instant death as soon as you click something, but normally it's an option you choose that'll kill you. One early example of this includes trying to cross this weird muddy lake, only to be pulled underneath by a monster. Another example includes sleeping in some random bed, and waking up to find that you are now buried alive, which, like, why would you sleep here, Mario? One of the best death scenes was the fake door death scene in the original 2014-2015 game, a certified hood classic. Lastly, another common death is being directly attacked by one of the ghosts in the game, and let me tell you, this game does not shy away from gore. Like, Jesus man, that's hey, Mario hey. you're chomping on. He was in Mario Land 2. <clears throat> Anyways, I'd love to sit here and list off every potential death scene, but I'll just be mentioning some here and there as I discuss the game. If you really want to see them, go play the game for yourself, but let me tell you, some of these are brutal. Also, I remember being really annoyed as a kid because Mario was super weak and dying to tame things like scissors and ghosts. I didn't really register it at the time that there could be new takes on characters like Mario. How sick would this game be if Mario got like the penguin suit or something? Let me tell you those ghosts would be running. Throughout the first part of this game, you find various notes that give some backstory as to who this mansion belonged to and what happened that left the mansion in this state. Specifically, we hear of a woman named Alice and her family consisting of her what? husband and two daughters. What? Alice apparently fell ill one day and wanting to become immortal so that she could stay with her husband, took the life of her family to fulfill a ritual that would accomplish this. The story gets crazy later on, but just for now, know that the spirits haunting this place consist of Alice, her dead family, and the others that lived in or around the mansion. After exploring the mansion and Mario getting attacked by some girl with scissors, you can use a code to open this chest to get even more scissors. Once again, Mario, you could just Goomba stop this evil girl into oblivion. Oh, wait, you can't stop on ghosts in Mario. My bad, my bad. You can use the scissors to access this library room, which has like 80 lore books you can read that better explain the story. We now learn that the two daughters were named Serena and Anna. Alice wanted to sacrifice Serena, but then the husband was against hurting the kids, and then the kids just disappeared. Alice pretended to be innocent, and yeah, Alice just then died, I don't know. You can grab the master bedroom key from this chest, and then after escaping the scariest thing of all, books, you can proceed to obtain another secret code. I didn't really mention it, but most things you need to progress are locked behind codes. They can be deciphered by counting items near the room, finding someone's birthday, finding notes, all that fun stuff. One of the items you can find is a note sheet, which you can actually play on this piano. Make sure you use the completed note sheet though, because if you play the incomplete note sheet that you can find, well, then this happens. I think it's hilarious that you can just play so badly that the piano itself is just like, nah, you gotta die for that one. Also, yes, I know it's a Mario 64 reference. No need to make fun of me in the comments, I know. They of course needed to bring back this traumatic event from my childhood. Playing the correct note she attracts Aria, one of the spirits haunting the house. She compliments her playing and is all like, I miss playing piano and working on my song. And then Mario's like, you mean this song? And then Aria's like, hell yeah, go take whatever you want from the kitchen. The kitchen has a safe where you can obtain the last key you need to get around the mansion. Also, you could get locked in the freezer and slowly have your body shut down and realize your demise is inevitable. I told you, some of these deaths are f***ed. Mario 3D World would have been a lot darker if this could happen, let me tell you. Heading up to the bedroom, a book on the shelf calls out to Mario. As you read it, you read more about how Alice killed for her husband, Serena was already dead for some reason, she apparently despised Anna, yada yada, we've heard it all before. Anyways, the book appears to be messing with Mario as he starts to hear a loud noise and start to feel a sharp pain in his head. Turns out that Alice is slowly but surely taking control of Mario, to which she succeeds. 
this ends what I consider to be the first part of the game, and with Mario MIA for this part, it's up to our man Luigi oh, yeah. to take the stage. How funny would it be if, like, Wario popped up instead? I'm just saying, if Wario the music box ever comes to exist, I'm playing that in a heartbeat. With Mario's fate left unknown, you finally get to play as someone else, the green man himself, Luigi. I immediately got dragged behind a door and killed. Off to a great start. Where are Luigi fans at? You can imagine how excited I was when I got to play Luigi in another mansion setting. Again. Luigi, concerned for Mario's well-being, enters the mansion to search for him. This, uh, strange, faceless Mario eventually attacks Luigi. Unfortunately, this is not the normal Mario who just happened to drop his face somewhere. This is the mansion's early attempts to absolutely fuck with Luigi. Also, holy shit, something about seeing Luigi getting choked out is way sadder than seeing it happen to Mario. Poor little fella. Luigi's luck gets even worse as he stumbles across Mario's corpse, which absolutely shatters his world. Forget Mario being dead and gone forever for a second. There's a Professor Egad mention. Let's go! After dealing with the dead Mario, Luigi enters a room with another dead Mario. I'm fairly certain that Luigi knows it isn't really real at this point, but he still reacts to every goddamn dead Mario like it's the first one he's seen. Oh, boo hoo. I'm cursed to see my closest friend and brother murdered over and over again. Cry about it, Snowflake. Hashtag liberal loan. Anyways, a new mechanic is finally introduced as you're given a black light. You can use the black light to see hidden messages in rooms and even look at notes in a different way. It's nothing major, but it's a nice addition to the gameplay. After some more exploration, which includes finding a hidden black light code, you stumble across a chest. Opening said chest reveals a bunch of jewels and gold, oh my goodness. Nah, it's just a dead kid. Sorry, Luigi. You're immediately flung into what appears to be some sort of flashback as you witness some child run into the room and be killed by his aunt. Judging by the dialogue, I'm sure you could put two and two together. That was Alice's nephew who just got pranked to death. The next major area you find is outside, and once again, there's a fake Mario. I thought this one would be more helpful because he's saying things like, don't succumb to the darkness, but then he proceeds to traumatize Luigi even further. After Mario jumps, Luigi makes me really sad, like, God damn it, Luigi, don't say any of that stuff, I'm here for you. One of the few moments in this game that made me cry like a bitch. I had to break up the sad moment by letting Luigi take a bath in the fountain. Aw, even Mario tries to help. Exploring onwards, Luigi stumbles across a, uh, roped structure on the ceiling. This is where another spirit in the house is revealed, one of the maids that used to work here. Basically, Alice wanted to kill the maid named Rosa so that she could be sacrificed. To avoid this, Rosa took her life so that Alice couldn't complete the ritual. Once again, Luigi should not be the one dealing with this. There's another spirit you encounter, but he's not as friendly as Rosa. Or maybe he's just too friendly and likes to hug your throat really, really tight. In the room shared by the spirits, a locked chest is present. You can use the black light to decipher the code, find a picture of Rosa from when she was alive, and give the picture to the spirit. Turns out that the angry spirit was in love with Rosa, and he was murdered. Wonder who could have done that one. Anyways, he's nice now, and you can leave the area. Luigi immediately runs into this blonde anime dude, who, unlike everybody else, is an actual human being named Reba, who's also stuck in this mansion. I hate this guy, but more on that later. Wait, how could you possibly hate on that guy? He's the GOAT! Luigi gets shrugged off by this dang and rampa ass white guy and he moves on through the mansion. You can get stared at by the evil Mario and complete this clock puzzle by changing the time, which reveals a secret stairway. You can't just escape evil Mario though, because he's waiting for you with a big warm smile. Aww. Wait, I take the awe back, he's faceless again. Okay, Jesus, he has a face again. I, I'll never mind. A chase scene occurs where you gotta book it, but pots keep getting in your way. This is one of the only instances where I died unintentionally, because I wasn't expecting these pots to move in front of me. After even more dead Mario, like, come on, we get it, Luigi can't take it anymore and breaks down crying. Once again, he just thinks this is the real Mario, even though five seconds ago, he calls out the fake Mario for being fake. This man is so gullible. With Luigi stuck grieving, it's up to Reba, our favorite piece of 
of shit to go through the mansion. I'm not joking. You're going to hate this guy. You enter the third part of the game, or at least I think it's the third part. I basically consider each time you change characters a different part. And then there's the fourth part, which is the game's ending. And it's just a, anyways, you now play as Reba, who happens to hear Luigi crying, but he just ignores it. After Reba argues with the voice in his head, I guess, Reba hears another scream, but instead of Mr. Green, it's actually Mr. Red. Mr. Red seems pretty startled though and runs away. Reba, being the great friend he is and not trying to use Mario at all, he tries to talk to Mario as he runs away. After Mario pushes him away even more, another mechanic is introduced into the game. Well, I shouldn't say another mechanic, it's basically just making another choice like normal, but this time, you've got a little heart that you have to drag over your answer. I personally wouldn't recommend trying to hug Mario immediately because, you know, Mario's all possessed and stuff, but it doesn't even matter if you die, because as Reba, you cannot die by picking the wrong option. Eventually, you can talk to him, wear him down a bit, and Mario hits a fat snooze in your arms. Aww. Aw, they're lovers. With Mario unconscious, more lore is dropped. Reba reads about the ritual that Alice tried attempting, and the voice in its head reveals itself to be this weird cat god thingy, and the cat wants to shoot the shit. I mean, I wouldn't be so dismissive of this cat, Reba. They seem pretty chill, except for the part where they say that Reba will die. Then the cat seems super chill. While this is happening, Mario is in this weird dream world where he actually encounters Alice. She informs Mario that she's gonna be taking over his body, to which Mario does nothing but go, boo hoo, leave me alone. Transport Transported into this weird hallway, Mario now encounters a little girl, starts throwing up blood, and wakes up from this strange dream. Mario and Reba officially meet after this and eventually team up. Move over, Luigi. It's time for the Mario and Reba series of games. After exploring around for a while, the two come across this gap. Wanting to find a way across, Reba wants to go back into the mansion. You gotta play your cards right with this though. If you let Mario go in instead of you, he gets killed. If you leave without saying anything, Mario falls off the cliff and dies. If you give Reba the lantern to go inside, Reba gets eaten immediately. You really can't win here. You have to let Reba go inside the mansion with no light, and after having another heart to heart with the cat about purpose and needing help or something, you finally find a plank of wood to cross the gap. It turns out that Mario's an even bigger Reba hater than I am, as after you go back to check on him, Mario is now in the mansion threatening Reba's life. It's revealed that anytime Mario's got these spooky green eyes, it means that Alice is in control. Anyways, now you gotta run away from the possessed Mario and find a hiding spot. This is also where the funniest thing in the entire game takes place. Like, I audibly laughed so hard at this. Let me just play the scene for you. Literally my favorite death scene in OG Mario Music Box as well. But in a sequel, there is something even better. Trust me. The correct thing to do here is hide in the closet, jump out and choke Mario, but let Mario come back to consciousness. Don't choke him for too long, because then the choke works, well, like oh, a choke yeah. should. Mario, coming back from being possessed, gets sent to that dream world again. Bam. This time, in the very same hallway from the last dream sequence, Princess Peach is there? I won't lie, after playing this game for hours, seeing another Mario character gave me whiplash. Following Peach, you witness a flashback of Alice's two daughters. Serena and Anna are playing when Serena trips and starts to cry. Alice comes out there and the incredible mother that she is immediately blames Anna for it, verbally abuses the ever-loving hell out of her daughter, and dips out of there. Anna is very understandably upset about the situation and Mario wakes up once again. Finally coming to, Mario demands to know what happened. You can either just gaslight the hell out of him, including lying about Luigi being there, or you could tell him the truth. This will either lead to Reba's death or one of the saddest things in the whole game. If you decide to tell Mario that Luigi is in the mansion, Mario runs off and looks for Luigi immediately. However, once you find him, Luigi just assumes that this is another fake Mario and proceeds to attack him. This either ends in Mario stabbing Luigi in self-defense and killing him, or Luigi straight angling Mario to death. This shot's sad, man. Go back to silly lampshade deaths. I like those better. For real, this part was and is still hitting different, especially when I played it for the very first time. 
Anyways, gatekeep girl boss gaslight on Mario, bring the plank to the gap, and descend into the forest area of the mansion. Mario eventually collapses due to hunger cause I'm sure he's been here for weeks at this point, and it's now up to Reba to find some food. This is a pretty fun part of the game, as you gotta choose the right mushroom in this cave to give to Mario. Some of them are edible, but do nothing. Some of them are too bitter, and some of them just immediately kill him in the most brutal way possible. For example, there's this one little white mushroom here that if you feed to Mario, he just turns into more little white mushrooms. Whoopsies, didn't mean to do that. Once you get Mario back up on his feet, you could cross this bridge over here. This is where Alice stops Reba and reveals that she actually wants to work together. Also, Reba and Alice know each other from before Alice died, but we'll talk about that here in a bit. Alice tells Reba that if he brings Mario to her for the ritual, she'll let him go. Reba, being the piece of shit that he is, immediately agrees to do so. Mario, who continues on, finds the grave of the two daughters of Alice. It's also revealed that their father's name was Reba? What? Okay, it's somewhat obvious if you read all the little notes in the game, but it's still a neat twist. Anyways, Reba yells, fire in the hole, and knocks Mario unconscious. Another dream sequence in Mario's head plays, and this time, it's the death of that butler that we saw earlier. Alice did indeed kill him. <sighs> Real sad. I'm probably gonna cry about it later. Also, Alice reveals that she's doing this because she loves Reba? I don't know, man. Back to Luigi, he actually runs into Reba again, who just so happens to be carrying an unconscious Mario. Reba is then chased down by Luigi, which I don't blame Reba for running. Being hunted down Luigi by there. Luigi has to be terrifying. Mario, after being dropped by Reba, wakes up and tries to leave again. This time, he gets locked into this room with an evil painting in it that for some reason turns into Princess Peach holding a syringe. You know what? I won't question it. You can't escape this room normally. You have to run around the room, grab some alcohol and a match, and burn her to the ground. I will say, it's nice seeing a new method of escaping a threat in this game. It's mostly just been running away up to this point. The spirit burns and calls out the Mario-Alice hybrid for being an asshole. Turns out that was Alice's sister, and Alice kinda killed both of her kids. Like, you know, that one kid we saw on the chest? Yeah, that was hers. Mario rightfully tells her that he just wants to get out of here, and she's all like, damn, I hate living people. Good luck dealing with that Alice in your head, see ya. After this, you can leave, and Mario and Luigi finally reunite. God damn, that feels good to see. As soon as this happens, Mario the Music Box is officially in the end game, because from here on out, you can work your way towards one of the endings. Uh, don't worry though, because we are far from over. There's like six of these things to cover. Now, technically, there are eight endings in total, but two of them are if you just immediately leave, either at the beginning of the game or when you first play as Luigi. The other endings will derive from where you go at this point in the mansion next. Mario and Luigi suggest going to the front door again, which, if you choose to follow, will enact the missing ending. Making your way back to the front door, you can finally leave and run away from the house. However, Mario feels doubtful that this is actually the end, so he immediately wants to go back into the mansion. Luigi obviously protests this, and Mario, in a very calm fashion, turns around and stabs Luigi. Alice has now taken complete control over Mario and leaves Luigi there to bleed to death. The game ends, and you get a message saying that your adventure isn't over yet and that you've hit an arc? This is a reference to the continuation of the game, which I have yet to reference, called Mario the Music Box Arc. Now, it does mean that this ending is technically canon, which I think is dumb and stupid, but I won't be talking about Arc here today, simply because it just has so much going on for it that it could be its own video. Let me know in the comments if you want me to talk about it. I would love to hop on that video as well, because there is an even better death scene than the lamp scene that we mentioned earlier, and it would be a shame to not show it to the audience in the future. Plus, this is where you're gonna get sympathy for Reba, the certified Reba hater. That was definitely the quickest ending of the bunch. The rest of them require a little more exploration and effort, but they've got a lot more to them too. If you choose to enter the mansion, but instead of going to the front door, you go upstairs, there's two more endings you now have access to. After you make your way upstairs and also refuse to go into this random room that Mario will probably kill you in, Mario seems to pass out and is stuck in a strange comatose state, with the possessed green eyes, of course. Also, he's coughing blood, so you better move fast. You run into that maid, Rosa, from earlier, to which Rosa offers her help. 
She claims that she'll help your brother out, but you gotta help her remember the person that she loves. If you remember earlier, the person that she loved was actually the butler, Alfred. Although he seems like a huge creep through his diary entries, we gotta help anyways. There's also this door here that's guarded by Alfred and Rosa, but we'll talk about that soon. To help out Rosa, you can retrieve the name of Alfred, an apology letter, and an engagement ring. The engagement ring's a bit of a doozy to obtain, but you need to do it to get this part right. Once you get your grubby little mitts on the items, you have to hand Rosa the ring and the letter, and she seems to be happy about this. Don't give her the wrong items though, because it leads to her taking over Luigi's body and then murdering Mario immediately after. It's in multiple different ways too, you gotta admire the creativity. Do my playthroughs, just out of curiosity, I try to get as many death scenes as possible. You know, gotta complete the gallery 100%. When you do help her out, the item you get from her is holy water, which now you can finally get one of the two different endings. The first one actually has you returning the gift to Rosa, as in returning the holy water into her face and killing her. Oh, don't forget Alfred too, he's still in the back after you took his ring away. You obtain the key to get through the door that was blocked off before and actually escape the mansion. However, Alice never actually leaves Mario as he can't move or speak or do anything anymore. He's kind of just left to be comatose for god knows how long. Anyways, Luigi wants to mercy kill him, he cries, and that was the end. Jesus Christ, that was sad. It's like if there was a new Sonic game where if you didn't get all the Chaos Emeralds, you had to watch Sonic's no! legs get amputated. Now, if you use the water for its intended use and splash it on Mario, then he comes to, and you guys can go outside. Something finally goes right for once, and when they go outside, Reba is dead on the ground. Let's go! Anyways, Alice is pretty pissed that you won't give her your body, and it's time for a boss fight. Not before a quick monologue, though. This animation plays during the boss fight, which, despite the short amount of time it's actually on screen, is super cool to see. To fight Alice, you have to choose the amount of holy water you want to splash, and then time your space bar while the arrow is in the green on this little bar that pops up. The more water you try to use, the smaller the green area is, and the faster the arrow goes. Basically, you gotta throw enough to kill Alice before she kills you first, and let me tell you, she f***ing destroys you, actually ripping you in half while Mario does a realistic scream of bloody murder. In my opinion, probably the most brutal death scene in the game. Those blood cutting screams, I felt that. You finally defeat Alice, and Mario is relieved, but unfortunately for him, the music box breaks in the process of Alice's defeat, and Mario is presumably sucked into the music box. Also, Mario does another realistic scream, which is always great. Being the cool red man he is, Mario decides to not let the curse of the music box hurt anybody else, and actually sacrifices himself to contain the curse forever. Also, he turns into a Fortnite skin in the process. Also, also, Alice is now a baby for some reason. Also, 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 now Mario doesn't exist anymore and Luigi eventually has his memory wiped so that he isn't sad about Mario being gone. <gasps> that was a lot of also's. After all that chicanery, Fortnite Mario raises Alice as his own daughter, teaching her to survive on her own. He does this because one day he just decides to drop on her that he's leaving forever and barely gives her a chance to even say goodbye. Fortnite Mario goes back to the cursed mansion forever, Alice is like a person again, and the game comes to a close. I really liked that ending, it was a bittersweet one, and the idea that Alice deserves a second chance was a little odd to me, but I guess that the mansion did curse her to be insane and whatnot, so I don't know. Also, the Fortnite Mario looked cool, I can't wait for him to drop in the new battle pass. I heard if you guys leave a like and subscribe to Dopebub, Mario becomes playable next season. We're closing in on the last four endings of the game, and let me tell you, these are drastically different from the other ones. Like Luigi accidentally destroying the world. Uh, I told you, this sh gets crazy. Back to the initial Mario and Luigi meetup, if you decide not to go through the front door or upstairs, you can actually explore through the mansion once again. Don't pick up this random ringing phone though, it somehow awakens Alice like a sleeper agent and she stabs Luigi. Another tip, don't look into the mirror, Mario doesn't look too great, his eyes also turned into olives for some reason. After finding a fireplace and Mario almost gets sucked up into said fireplace, Mario obtains a gate key and also coughs up a piece of a medallion. I don't blame him though, because if I saw a shiny gold object on the ground, I'd eat it right up. 
You combine the two medallion pieces, which I totally mentioned the first piece of the medallion before, you just didn't hear me, and you can bring it to this safe that seems to be missing its knob. Crack that safe open to reveal a dispel charm and a family photo featuring Reba and Alice standing together. Aw, what a beautiful family. It's a shame Alice pretty much killed everybody in this picture. Mario shot into the dream world again, and this time you see Anna, Alice's daughter, being confronted by this girl Marie. She was the one who ate Reba in the dark a while ago. Anyways, Anna just straight up confesses to killing her sister Serena, which explains why Serena died before Alice could sacrifice her. Alice, being the absolutely loving mother she is, takes the news of her daughter's murder just a little too hard. Oh, but she's innocent, guys. It's just the curse that created her hatred for her adopted daughter since the moment she met her. <gasps> a doy? With the dispel charm you found in the safe, you can enter this room and find a note. The note seems to be from Alice's father, warning her against marrying Reba. It's pretty heavily implied that Reba had something to do with Alice's descent into madness, and this note just straight up confirms it by calling him a demon, which is true. I mean, just look at this guy, he's terrifying. Anyways, you can grab this water charm and then use said water charm to cross a normally fatal part outside this weird muddy river. After navigating this forest maze, Is that a Mario RPG channel reference? Which requires direction from these bloody arrows on a wall in the mansion, you come across the mineshaft, one of the final locations in the game. One small interaction missed and your entire ending is changed. I did fail to mention before, if you encounter something or someone that could possibly change your ending, a big warning is put on the screen. I do appreciate that it gives you time to ponder if you want to make that decision or not, but I also feel like it just gives a bit of the surprise away, you know? A nice quality of life feature, but I could take it or leave it. As a let's play, I appreciated that warning, so I knew when to make a separate save file. Help me save some time before I had to replay the whole game again up till this point. There's also a grave right outside the cave where you can enter into the mineshaft, and interacting with it reveals the bones of a child? This game does not shy away from this stuff, god damn. The grave belongs to Serena, and she wants to remember how she died, so it's up for you to find something that'll remind her somehow. Oh yeah, helping her changes your ending, by the way, if that wasn't obvious. Anyways, into the coal mine, whoopee! The mine's filled with these mindless ghost miners, and you gotta navigate without getting into any trouble, like touching old stagnant water. Definitely don't touch old stagnant water, because Luigi just happens to get something in his eye, and of course that something is this crazy tooth parasite monster, god forbid the water is normal for once. Eventually, you encounter the other sister, Anna. She tries to keep you away from a certain area, but pushing onward not only knocks Luigi out, which what the hell, Anna, not cool, but also reveals her to Mario. She's like, I hate you, and then Mario's like, what if I save you all? And then she's like, all right, I guess. This area you find also contains a little bow, which is the reminder you need to give to Serena back outside. Giving her the bow, she remembers, oh yeah, my sister chased me down in the woods and brutally killed me. That's right. <laughs> nah, bro, and it was going full shovel night on her, actually. Anna apologizes apologizes though, so Serena immediately forgives her and they make up. Like, I get it, it wasn't entirely Anna's fault, she had some weird ghost demon girl haunting her named Beatrice, and she was pushing her hard to do these things, but god damn, Serena forgives her so fast, like Anna goes on this whole spiel about how their mom loves Serena more, that shit felt super personal, I wouldn't forgive her so fast. Anyways, if you do this, it doesn't come up again until the very end, so hold on, we'll get there. Back into the mineshaft, and after crossing a bridge over lava, which the Mario Brothers do all the time, why are they so scared? They're trapped into a new area by some rubble. Luigi gets fucking pissed and yells at Mario, which scares him away. Aw, poor Luigi, Mario must be feeling awful. It's all right, never mind, he looks like he's doing great. Now under Alice's control, Mario attacks, but not before Reba comes to the rescue with his famous Reba chop. Reba then carries Mario away to start the ritual, and Luigi is left to catch up. Mario awakens to yet another dream sequence, this time revealing that Reba found out that Anna was murdered by Alice. That didn't end so well for Alice after that. Mario wakes up and he's told about the ritual about to take place. Reba does offer Luigi safety if Mario just cooperates, to which Mario does agree. Back to our green man, the cat from earlier approaches Luigi and is like, Hey, cry baby, you gonna cry? And that gives Luigi the push to keep going. This is where the final scene of the game takes place, and depending on what you've done up to this point, you can get four different endings. Or you can accidentally find this black cat behind a mushroom and get spoon-fed any ending you want. I swear on my life, I found this by accident. 
Approaching the end of the game, Luigi stumbles across the ritual taking place. Mario is absolutely eating it up in Alice's dress, and Reba is doing the ritual for her. Reba tells Luigi what's what, and then tells him to leave. Now, normally you're not supposed to leave, you're supposed to stay and help Mario, obviously, but if you do decide to leave, oh boy, did you f*** up. Luigi leaves the mineshaft thinking, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have left my brother to get possessed by a murderous ghost lady. He doesn't have much time to ponder it though, because as soon as he leaves the cave, the world is in flames and disarray. The cat person comes out and explains that he messed up by letting Alice walk free, and yeah, the world's just kinda gone. Nice going, dumbass. This ending wasn't the first original version back in 2015. This was quite shocking to me when I first encountered it. Now, if you decide to stop Reba, he tries to attack but immediately gets killed. Reba doesn't live in like any of the endings, and honestly, I think that's how it should always go. And that's why the missing ending is the canon event. Because we still got a few questions open about that fishy boy. Anyways, Mario has begun to get permanently taken over by Alice, who traps Luigi in this strange clock tower place. The newly named Malice, which, do you get it? It's like Mario and Alice combined? That's crazy. Monologues to Luigi for a bit. Anyways, Mr. Green does what Mr. Green does and goes to stop her, and the final and true boss fight has finally arrived. While you're in the clock tower, you gotta disable all these strange light things before the two minutes are up and Mario was possessed forever. There are six lights, and when you interact with one of them, you gotta time your arrow again to land in this green area in the bar, similar to how the other Alice boss fight went. Except with each light that you deactivate, it becomes much more difficult. You need to land multiple bars in a row, they speed up, you know, they get difficult. Yeah if you suffer from skill issues. While you're doing this, Alice and her shadow cronies chase you down. If you run out of health, you better be able to land that bar again or else you're met with a torso full of silly shadow guys. That reminds me of an OG game, you had to mash the space bar in to survive and god, you needed to actually go for work record pace while mashing to actually defeat her. After that fight, I swear my whole freaking arm was sore. But anyways, I will admit it was a little annoying to get the hang of though, especially if you're cornered and you're trying to immediately click on the lamp again, you might accidentally get yourself killed because the bar you need to dodge Alice's attacks will pop up. After deactivating six lights, Alice, I mean malice, I keep forgetting, shrugs whatever it was you just did off. Wait, actually, what was the point of turning those lamps off? I have no clue. All right, now we're finally to the end of the game. And from here, there's three different endings you can get. It really all depends on how you interact with Anna back in the mineshaft, so you better hope you did the right thing, or else you're doing the whole mineshaft portion again. Or, or you could just talk to the magic spoon-feeding cat who hides behind the mushroom hoop whoever that asshole is. Now, if you completely ignored Anna in the mineshaft and went straight to the right with Mario, you get what's called the sealed ending. After Alice, I mean Malice, fuck, after Malice shrugs off your light switch attacks, the spirit of Anna tells you to use the music box to trap Alice in. She's red in this scene though, that's how you know she's evil. Luigi prepares to trap her once more, but Alice is a sore loser and decides to take Mario with her. As soon as she's trapped in the box, Mario gets pushed off a cliff, Luigi can't grab him in time, and he dies. Thankfully, Ghost Mario is here to ease Luigi's fears, as Ghost Marios do. Luigi manages to escape the mansion and make his way towards the Mushroom Kingdom. Let me just say, it's still so damn weird to see other Mario characters in this game. You're telling me Toad existed in the same universe that Mario got twisted into a meat pretzel? Can I please remind you that this is a canon Mario character? Anyways, Luigi makes her home and tells the princess everything. Luigi goes to retrieve Mario's body just as he had promised Ghost Mario, one realistic Luigi scream later, and roll credits, baby. I do feel bad for Luigi in this ending, but hey, it could always be worse. If you interact with Anna, but don't help her and Serena out, you get what's called the puppet ending. Anyways, to feed Alice, she shrugs off your light flickering shenanigans again, and you present the music box. However, this time it seems to actually work, and Alice is sealed away. Luigi and Mario escape, and it appears to be all over. Mario notes that something feels off though, like half of him is missing or something. Hmm. Later, they make it back to the house, and oh my goodness, butt naked Mario? That's gotta be the scariest thing in this whole game. Anyways, Mario seems pretty distant the rest of the night, going to bed early and just seeming odd. Luigi is very concerned. Hmm, could it be because he just went through a life-changing traumatic experience? Surely not. 
Okay, well, apparently Luigi is right to be concerned because apparently part of Alice is still with Mario and Mario was no longer in control. Luigi wakes up in the middle of the night. Mario tells Luigi to hold his knife for a second and Alice successfully takes Mario's body for her own, ending the game. See, Luigi could have had it way worse, but I know what you want to see. You want to see an ending where everybody actually, uh, you know, lives. And don't you worry because we saved the best for last. Now, if you did what I talked about earlier and reconnected Serena and Anna, after you defeat Malice and she hits you with the possessed Mario stare, you proceed into the final ending. Serena and Anna actually help you this time as they hold back Alice as Luigi seals her away once and for all. No fake outs this time, no dead or possessed Marios, this one's for realsies. The two brothers make their way out of the mine shaft to a rising sun. They enjoy their first moment of peace in what seems to be months. It's then interrupted by this dumbass though. Alice begs them not to leave and that she only did everything she did because she was blinded by love huh? for Reba. Oh, come on, you killed so many people. Oh, I've been a horrible mother. No shit. Anyways, it's kind of implied that Reba was the true villain all along, so I'm not too mad about this ending, but Alice, you do not deserve forgiveness. Mario, however, being himself, shatters the music box, freeing Alice's spirit to pass on to the next life. I think this is the first time that we see Mario's video game personality leak through. Mario is the nicest guy in existence after all, I mean, he's Boing. Mario. With all the spirits freed, Mario and Luigi make it back to the Mushroom Kingdom. They decided not to tell anyone about what happened, which if I was Peach, I would be pissed that after being missing for months they wouldn't say anything, but I mean, I get it, Luigi did see like 80 dead Marios after all. The PTSD must be real for sure. Also, Bowser gets mentioned, which is hilarious. Why didn't he fight Alice? No, no, better yet, why didn't Wario come in with the shoulder charge to mess her up? Anyways, Mario burns a journal with all the notes from his adventure, and the two watch the journal go up in flames, with this terrible tragedy never needing to be brought up again. And with that, the story of Mario the Music Box finally comes to an end. Oh, also, there's a post credit scene of Reba trying to kill the cat, as Reba does, and then he gets jumped by a bunch of ghosts. I guess he lived after all, but thankfully, not for too long. F in the chat. With all the endings completed and my gallery at 92%, I can finally say that Mario the Music Box is yeah! over, and goddamn what a roller coaster that was. This video script is already 20 something pages long. That is a long ass script, let me tell you. If I had to explain my feelings about this game, which I've got a lot of feelings about this game, I'd say they're positive, but like 80% positive. I'm a sucker for this kind of game, and the plot of this game reminds me so much of those classic RPG maker horror games with a mysterious plot. I don't think the original characters are like crazy deep, but I think they serve their purpose in the story well. Alice's character, while I don't think was deserving of her redemption, was written fairly well. And her relationship with Reba, on top of the curse of the mansion driving her to insanity, was also pretty fun to watch unfold. I don't know if her verbally abusing her child was due to the curse though, not cool Alice. We gotta play Ark to understand it for sure though. As far as original characters go, they're pretty alright, and as far as Mario and Luigi go, they're alright as well. Now they're very much both the straight man, reacting to the chaos and horror of the mansion and the situations around them. Them, and I think that works well here. I mean, Mario's known for being happy-go-lucky and cheerful 24-7, but that's really it. You can't really put someone like that into the story without it feeling weird, so I'm glad this game gives a little bit of a different take on his character. It's nothing groundbreaking, but there's not a whole lot you can really do for this character to make him work perfectly in this situation, you know? The gameplay was alright. I mean, it's very puzzle and exploration focused, like most RPG maker horror games. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it, and honestly, I was way more invested in the story anyways. Speaking of the story, I thought that was pretty good too. Watching fucking Super Mario go on this crazy haunted mansion, get possessed, meet the worst human being on planet Earth, and basically having his whole world shattered was fun as hell. One thing I will say is that the dialogue felt kind of generic or stilted at times. It wasn't too frequent, but it was enough where I kind of noticed it. One thing that was fantastic though was the art style. It adapts the Mario bros in an anime art style perfectly. It makes them not feel too out of place next to regular people, and of course the crazy bloody death scenes are drawn pretty well too. I don't know how many more times I could see Mario get bloodshot eyes though, that was not pleasant to see. The music is great too, a lot of these orchestral and mellow songs are present throughout the game. It's crazy to think that all of this was made for a Mario fan game. I know, a game with music box in the title having good music? Crazy, right? 
My final thoughts on the game are that it's a fun experience that obviously had a lot of passion put behind it. The problems I have with it are minor, and honestly, I think it could have worked just as well without the Mario characters, but I still had a great time from beginning to end. Especially comparing this game to other Mario horror games, this thing is a masterpiece. I mean, this is a whole 5-10 to 10 hour long, multi-ending, lore-filled experience. Goddamn Mario.exe is not going to have a chance at competing. I must admit, this time during my journey as a YouTuber, playing a Mario horror RPG game instead of EXE games was undoubtedly my favorite part in series during my entire career. A huge shout out to Team Mari for putting together this game, and another shout out to Luigi Kid for not only introducing me to this game way back in the day, but giving his thoughts on this game with me today. Thanks for having me, and who knows, maybe we'll be doing another video talking about Mario Music Box Arc, the continuation in the future. Also, if you don't know me, subscribe to my channel. And of course, to Don't Bub. The gold really deserves it. Best of luck in the future, my dedicated bro. I had a lot to say about this game. I'm sure you could tell by the length of this video. But if the devs are, for some reason, watching this video, I just have one last thing I want to say. C can you put Waluigi in the next update and have him just beat the hell out of Reba? Please, I am begging you.